welcome again to another episode of Savvy Singers TV show. Today's guest is no stranger to the set of the Savvy Singers, nor of PRV and Performing Arts Academy. Um, we are here today to have a conversation about leadership. We may answer some of the questions that has been in your mind, some things that you have been wondering about leadership and yourself. Our guest today is none other than Richard Solomon. Yes, and we are so delighted to have you yet another time sitting in the hot seat. How are you, sir? Well, the seat doesn't feel too hot, <laughs> but I'm doing well. Good nice, to be here. Nice, nice, Awesome. How have you been since the last time? Um, we... Getting better. I've had yes. some health challenges, but right. nothing that is insurmountable. You know, awesome. the, the body is designed to last only so long, so, and we have to take care of it. <laughs> we have to take care. Mm -hmm. We have to do our part, yes? Mm -hmm. So I know the last time we, we, we talked about some of your qualifications and, you know, the company and what you do, right. all right, and these things, and you're currently pursuing your PhD in management psychology, correct? I am, yes. Nice, nice. Now, how is that going? Um... It has its good days, <laughs> and then it has its not-so-good days. Mm -hmm. um, I, as I was saying to my supervisor, I lean into the discomfort. There's so many things that we right. don't know. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, you can be in school for years, as most of us have been, and, and then it's almost like you open a door and there's all this other information right. that you just didn't right. realize, and all these related constructs and concepts. So it's an interesting it's journey. It's not for everyone, certainly, <laughs> but it's an interesting journey. <laughs> well, all the best <laughs> on your endeavors and pursuing and completion. Yes? Yeah, so you'll get that done eventually. Right. <laughs> you'll get done eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so with the topic in hand, mm -hmm. we, we're talking leadership, and mm -hmm. you have been uh, training, uh, developing leaders globally, um, helping leaders, raise leaders. Yes, uh, yes. You also work with groups, mm -hmm. um, not just corporate, but also some a little bit in the religious uh, yeah, sector. from time to time. You yeah. worked with, with our choir and, yes, and leaders in our church. We did ago, some yes. team builder exercises and yeah. stuff like that. So in the minds of the folks, and I, I hope I, I can touch some of the questions that people would be answering or, mm. or wanting to know. Right. You know, in your journey, your experience working with other leaders and developing leaders, what would you say is your definition of a leader? Hmm. Um, my definition. Well, leadership is the, is the opposite of followership. Right. So followership is sort of lining up behind someone else and taking a cue, taking direction mm. from them. Mm. And so if leadership is the opposite of followership, mm. then it would be getting in front of other people and giving cues and giving direction and sort of pointing the direction. Right. So if I were to make a not so tidy definition of my own, that's what it would be. Right. Um, let me introduce a couple of others though. Sure. Because Maxwell talks about um, leadership is influence. Right. And I know Maxwell is quite uh, popular yes. in Trinidad and Tobago yes. and, and in the Caribbean and so yes, on in our yes, countries. Yes. Um, he says that leadership, leadership is influence, yes. which I particularly like as a definition. Yes. Now, if we were to go a little bit more corporate, we probably would say that leadership is the act of influencing a group of people mm -hmm. within a particular structure mm -hmm. to accomplish some Goal objective or goal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so for a profit organization, that's going to be money, um, mm. but safely. <laughs> um, for a not-for-profit, there's going to be some objective, some mandate that, that right. they have to accomplish. Right. But it's all about influence. I mean, if you think about all of those, those three definitions, yes. they're all influence-related. Definitely. And then because of leadership, you also have... The, to carry out the vision, mm -hmm. you know, the people aspect of yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, to, to, to get whatever the goal mm -hmm. is accomplished, all right? And, and moving on from that, you know, a lot of people will consider themselves leaders or aspire to be leaders. And so the question is, how do you, is a leader born a leader or... Can you learn to be a leader? So, 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 so I'm going to take your question as a, as a question two. I'm, I'm going to go with, with the question one that you didn't ask, but you asked, which is around um, asp aspiring to right, be a leader. Right, right. Uh, I firmly believe that not everyone needs to be a leader. Not everybody is suited to that. Why? Why? why, why, why firmly be well, because one, it takes a lot of work. Right. It's a lot of doing. Um, and in, depending on the organization and the type of leadership, 
uh, the type of environment, it's a very thankless job. Mm. You know, mm. a lot of sleepless nights, and the rewards can be very small. A lot of times the rewards are emotional. Right. Right? Um, if you're in an organization, a corporate setting, if you are the, let's go to the top of the organization, the CEO, then you get pressure from below, and you get pressure from on top. Your stakeholders, your shareholders, your board. Right. You get pressure from right. below. So right. leadership is not for everyone. Right. Some people aspire to it because it looks good on paper, right. or it looks good on social media, right. or it looks good on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> um, some people think there's a lot of money there. Uh -huh. I've also met people who say, I'd love to do my job and do, it, do a great job, but I have no interest in, in, in leading other people in that right. same way. So right. um, I don't think it's for everyone. No. To your to question two, I deem it question two. Are leaders born or made? Um, I think both. Mm -hmm. Because if you think of what leadership is, we said influence. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of how we structure it, it's influence. Mm -hmm. And so how do you influence others? Well, it's by your behavior. Right. It's by action. Mm -hmm. something, you, something you do or say. And so the question then becomes, well, are there things that you could do or say that come naturally right. that will cause others to follow you? Yeah. Obviously, Obviously, yes. Obviously, yes. But are there things that you should do or say to cause others to follow you that some of us don't have naturally? Obviously, yes. And can you learn them? Obviously, yes. Because it's behavior. <laughs> you know, so both leaders are both born and nice. made. Mm -hmm. nice, nice. And, and for someone who has the, the traits and the characteristics mm -hmm. and is that the be all of it? Now you have to shape that and mold it, con you know, confine, you know, refine yeah. the ability to, to now lead and influence others correctly. How important is for that for leaders to yeah. continue? Well, let me borrow from, from the arts. Mm -hmm. If you think about grandmasters, virtuosos, anyone who had sort of this natural genius ability. Right. Bach or Beethoven. Not so much Beethoven, but Bach for mm -hmm. certain. Um, so they're born with talent. Mm -hmm. So I'm making a parallel. Yes. But what did they then do? Mm -hmm. They went on to study. Right. Because in the, in the context of leadership, you, you're going to have some raw material, great. But then that has to be shaped and, shaped and molded. And then the environment keeps shifting. And the people keep shifting and the goals keep shifting. And if that keeps happening, then you have to keep adjusting. Plus, it's hard to lead people to a place that you haven't gone or you haven't seen. Right. And so if you start out at sort of ground level and your followers sort of get behind you because there's some small thing, I say small, that you want to accomplish, as you walk, you see more. But very often, you need more to get there. Right. You know? So yes, some of those same skills and so on, will help, but to really propel you beyond where you've been, usually you have to hone, hone those skills. Right, so it's more like the raw material, exactly. and now you, you shape that to what you want. Yeah. And even in the aspect, I love what you said there, you, you, you can't really take people to the place that you haven't been yourself. Or, or seen. seen, yeah. and that is important. Because yeah. even in the realm of like worship leaders mm -hmm. and, and your ministry and yeah. stuff, your devotion, Mm -hmm. All right, and leading person, you take about the tabernacle and taking them into the holies of holies and all these different things. If you are strange to that, mm -hmm. that process, yeah. how then can you exactly. lead someone to that place? Exactly. You know? So it's familiar, you have seen you it. You have to seen it. See it. <laughs> you have to have seen it. Yes. Um, and I mean, when we think about seeing, we can also think about vision. Right. So I've never been there, right. but I can right. see in this swamp. Yes. Theme park that is now named Disney World. Come on. That's what happened. That's what it is. Looked at the swamp and the yeah. friends say, you have to be crazy, man. He said, yes, I can see it. I can see and, it. And, you've, and we've seen a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Now, I would be doing less than a good job if I didn't say that leadership is not about good or bad in terms of outcome. Mm. Mm. It isn't. Mm. Some of the greatest leaders of all time. If we say leadership is influence, <laughs> have influenced people to do some horrible, horrible things. things. That is true. So it raises for me the accountability of leaders. Mm -hmm. Leaders have to be accountable for, for the place that they stand. Right. I remember some years ago, um, I can't tell you which one of these artists, it was a soca artist, and there was a fence that was erected for safety. And they, I, and I really don't remember, and I'm glad I don't remember who it was. <laughs> they told the people, I the think audience, I know exactly. Pick up the fence yes. and carry it over so. Yes. And they literally pick up they the did fence. It. And, they did see? it. 
Um, and so if you take the influence, and of course the music, and probably alcohol, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, but leaders so many can, different, exactly. can lead people to, to, to accomplish all kinds of different things, good or bad. Right. Right, and we have seen so many things over the years, and mm -hmm. even in history, yeah. you, you, we see the good side of that and the mm -hmm. bad side of it. And Absolutely. people have this tendency of blind loyalty, mm -hmm. all right? And because of your position yeah. to, to influence, position to lead, yeah. then they, they assume that followership. And, and what is also interesting, as you say that, is that some leaders make the mistake mm. of thinking, well, if the people do not follow me with blind loyalty. Ah. They are not loyal. Right. We see it in politics all the time. Come on. So if a politician says or does something, and a follower or a small group says, ah, but wait, I have a different view. How, how come? I don't agree. Mm -hmm. Those people are immediately deemed to be on the so-called other side. That's right. Which That's is, right. in my opinion, kind of weak. Because don't you want followers who make you better? Right who see parts of your, the peripheral that you can't see. You know, because there's this 360 and you can't see 360. If I put my hands here, right. I can't see. Right. So maybe you have followers who know and see things that you don't know and see. Right. Now, the world has told us that the leader should know all and be know all, all and, and have, all. you know, be in charge and mm -hmm. in control of mm -hmm. everything. That's mm -hmm. just not how humans are built. Correct. So it's sometimes tough to navigate that space. Yes, um, yes, yes. You know, it raises for me the, the different levels of leadership. Because right. the first level is I have to be able to lead myself. That's the first thing. And there are lots of leaders, and I've said this to corporations. Hmm. I've said to corporations, <laughs> you're promoting some people here who have no business leading other people wow. because they still can't lead themselves. Right, right. Which is right. hard. Right. I mean, right. you know, just the tongue, for example, which is an unruly member. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very mm -hmm. hard to lead. Yes. So some of us, we, we, we really have no business getting into leadership. And maybe I should have said that early on when I talked about <laughs> not everybody should be in leadership yeah. because, oh, we are not there yet. We right. have some growing up we have and some, some growing to do. discipline and right. self-regulation wow. to get to the place where you can lead self level one before you can lead people level two, before you can lead a function, function meaning accounting or, I don't know, camera work, what do you call this, videography or yes. something, before you can lead the whole organization, four levels. Wow. So many people have not passed level one. Leading self. And they're way up at level two or three or even four. They jump this. They yes, look. because the situation allowed for it. Right. Maybe they were situational leaders because sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. I call that the who we go put syndrome. Right. Tell us about that. Who we go put. That's right. Because the position is now empty because maybe someone has left. Right. Um, I don't know. Maybe ceremoniously or unceremoniously or here is a need that got created mm -hmm. in, the, in the society or in the environment. And we need to put someone in charge. Right. Who we go put? So there's no one who is right and ready and apt for the role. But we have to act. But we have to put someone. So we put someone. <laughs> and they fall all over themselves and their faces. And sometimes instead of growing and learning from that, or and or the environment, people follow us, allowing them the room to learn and grow. Right. They get beaten up. They right. beat themselves up or right. they run away. Or, uh, uh, yeah. Would you say that, that that is a lack of communication? Because if if you have the situation, the need is there. Right. And then, so let me let me talk with that first, and then I'll go to the other part. Mm -hmm. um, so now the, the boss, the employer, now has to fill this void. Mm -hmm. And you have the situational leader. Right. Now that you has to be communicated to the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We are doing this because yes. and we think this is the best fit yes. however yes this person we're working with them and we will want you to work with them just like what you said yeah, yeah. we beat them up because they don't fit mm -hmm. how would you respond to something like that i think is you see we hold leaders to a higher standard yes. naturally naturally yeah? we look up to them yeah yeah you know yeah. um we really generally don't look at leaders as a group of people who need support Mm -hmm. I, I work now with a lot of executive leaders in a coaching realm, so one-on-one. -on -one. All right. And they, w without exception, always say to me, this is such a lonely place. Mm -hmm. People expect so much of me. There are things that I, didn't, I don't know, I didn't know. And so, and I can't sort of blame the whole society. I think the society has gotten to this place, or we've probably been here for a very long time, where we have this belief that leaders are magnanimous and mm. maximum and they yes, know everything and yes, they can do everything. Yes. So when there is a gap now in com comparison between what we see of the leader 
and what we know of our expectations. Expectation. You know, we're not prepared to live with that. Yeah. So we beat them up. I mean, the I look at our politicians so. and oh, yeah. look at the licks <laughs> that they get. I mean, some of them really do some nonsense. <laughs> but they're human, and I think right. this is the thing. They that's are human. Yeah, that's it. You that's know, it. Um, I mean, so many things are coming up in my mind. One of them is that sometimes leaders get in for the wrong reasons. Mm. So their agenda does not match the agenda of the group. Uh, right. Right. And, and, and I said it right after politicians, but it's not just in politics. You find it everywhere you find everywhere. leaders. Everywhere. The agendas are very different. Opportunity. Mm -hmm. Opportunity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And, in your, and you say you quote, what, mm -hmm. what about the egos of leaders? How, how do you, as a coach, a consultant, address those things yeah. from the position of I'm in charge? Mm -hmm. I have the final say. Right. Um, they just have to do what I, what I tell them to do. Well, uh, how? Uh, I start from the position that all leaders know when to be autocratic. Mm. So there's room for that, you know. Mm -hmm. As much as it's sometimes unpopular, this mm. I have the final say. The truth is that groups don't make decisions. That's right. Individuals That's make right. decisions in that way, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I'm not talking about sort of we vote for a representative <laughs> on the student council or something. Right. Then the group kind of gets counted up and, okay, fine. But I'm talking about organizationally, mm -hmm. when we have to decide, okay, we're going to build a new plant in some country. Who decides that ultimately? That's right. You know, or we're going to, you know, let go of 10% of our staff. Who ultimately makes that decision? It's, it's not the group. Now, right. the group might come along. Right. But the individual. And bring the pieces it. together. Right. Now, so there's room for auto autocracy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is another thing we've been told. That democracy is the way to run everything. That's not true. Not true. No, that's not true. There's that's room true. for Because at the end autocracy. of the day, a decision has to be made. Yeah. <laughs> but having said that, there's also room for consultation. That's right. Depending on the type of decision, the speed of the decision. Right. You know? Speed. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the truth is, if I am the CEO, if I am the whatever, the executive director, to whom that's become very popular these days, um, I can't know everything. I'm not the expert on finance. I'm not the expert right. on engineering right. or right. law. I am right. not the expert. I may be an expert in one area because that's how our education system sort of guides us. Mm -hmm. So I really should consult consultation type one. The next level of consultation for me is, well, what about the people who are down in the belly of the organization? And there are always lots of them who know things that are happening on the ground that I can't possibly know because I'm so far removed right, from it. Right. I should be consulting. I should be trying to get very honest, unfiltered information. I used to do some work with a bank, one of our local banks, um, with the CEO, and we would go around to the different branches and different parts of the, the country and just have conversations with people. He would invite, just invite people, and, they would, and he would, at the end of it, we'd have this sort of a post section. Right. And, Always shocked about some of the things, positively and negatively. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. of the things that y you know you would hear. It's like the undercover boss series that I'm. Some people I'm sure some some of you have heard that on, yes. on television. Undercover boss. So there's room for that. Um, I have found that the best leaders are willing to check their egos at the door. Mm. The best ones, mm. and those are, uh, those who don't really do struggle. Right. Because how do, how else do you harness the collective creative genius of the organization? Mm -hmm. And the organization here could be church. Pan side, uh, that's right. barbecue team, that's right. you call it whatever you that's want, right. Fortune 100 company. How else do you f harness that? Yes. Government, how else do you yes. harness that? Yes. You have to listen to the others in the room who may have some knowledge and some specialty that, that you don't have. That's it. So that's the best ones. The that's ones that, are, that, are, that don't do that, they really do struggle because people very often will stay out of fear. Mm -hmm. um, they will continue on because they can't find something better. Right. You get those kinds of things, but you don't get the best out of them. Because yeah, the retention is very high in some organizations with that. With, with, with the, it, the, 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 the ego? Yeah. Retention is low, you mean, that people mm -hmm. don't stay? They won't stay. Um, that depends on the economy. Sometimes the retention rate, I've told HR practitioners this, is a, is a big fooler. Because if you look at the economy, where do they go? Right. If you're in an economy where unemployment rate is 20-something percent, mm -hmm. you have a lot of people just sticking around so that they can live. Right. But that doesn't mean that they're really engaged in the organization, the organization and giving you beyond, right. you know, just sort of the... the 100 percent. You know. Not even 100, because the right. average employee probably gives you about 60 percent. Right. So, you know, beyond 60 percent. <laughs> right? So if you're getting 80, that's good. That's if good. you're getting 100, that's magic. You know, so. <laughs> Says magic. Uncle <laughs> mm. uh, I want you to um, tell us about, you know, I'm, I'm listening 
and you know you talk about the situational leader yeah. and having to make that decision yeah. what are your views of employing outside of so like you have a specialty that is needed but it's not found or not ready in the, the, the development of your organization. Mm -hmm. Is anything wrong with looking for that particular specialty and employing in? And how do you? Well, the question is a little leading. It mm -hmm. sounds a little leading in my ears. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a bad question. Yeah. But it mm -hmm. sounds like it's leading me to say nothing is wrong with it. Right. And that could be my stuff. Right. I'm aware of that. Yes. Yes. Um, it really depends on the situation. Right. So if we're talking about filling roles that already exist in the organization right. versus creating new ones. Which, which one are you oh, talking about? Okay, cool. Already existing. <laughs> the research tells us, excuse me, that, and the practice tells us that it's best to grow from within. Okay. Growing from within, and I'm talking about corporations. Now, yes, sir. For-profit businesses. One, those people get up to speed a lot faster. Right. In other words, they're able to truly fill the role that is, has already existed, but they were not in it quicker right. than bringing someone from the outside. Right. One. Two, they cost the organization less. And if you're a for, for profit mm. organization, that's important. Mm. They are less likely to leave the organization as well. Right. Right. So the research suggests that, you know, however, if it's a new role or if there are some new components, like there's a culture shift that is needed, right. sometimes you need someone who doesn't have the baggage of the organization, who has had different experiences right. and therefore they can come into the situation and do differently they are not as easily bogged down by the weight of history within mm -hmm. that organization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times i get chided for this answer but it depends it depends right. and you know I, 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 i'm taking the opportunity to say this i've had junior leaders ask me you give that answer so often it depends <laughs> yeah because we're dealing with human behavior that's right and that's human right. behavior is not a consistent thing because we have these pesky things called emotions right. so we don't always respond consistently you know you have a tenor pan and this note is a c sharp and it's a c sharp and once it's in tune it's going to produce a c sharp humans are not like that mm. because if we get up on the wrong side of the bed hey. you know if we had uh, i don't know a financial yeah. disaster yeah. if there is something Some going on in our lives it can trauma, really it things. can impact what we put out, even in the same situation. Definitely. So, definitely. so it's, a little bit, it's a little bit different. It really does depend. Yes, yes, yes. You love what you do. You love what you do. Um, I'm a student of human behavior. Yes. I am fascinated by the why. Ah. You know, this is my biggest question. Why yeah. do we do the things we do? Right. And why, do we come, why do we have to do those things? Right. Of course, that gets me into a lot of trouble because, <laughs> because I question all kinds of things. That's it. But it's fascinating for me when you see people behave um, in a particular way, and then you take the same people, put them in a different situation, and they behave very differently. Right. You know. Right. I, I really appreciate that because even it takes me back to our first interview when we we spoke some time back, and you know we were talking about the company, and you said a human resource mm -hmm. is your most valuable. It is. You know, and 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 I'm hearing that mm -hmm. coming out because mm -hmm. you always go back to that. You know, is 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 the why the, yeah. the, the human being yeah. because we are dealing with. Humans, yeah, yeah. Yeah. is that something that you you have to uh, uh, always chime in to, to leaders when you go in and have a consultation or a coaching session? Is it something that they're um, aware of or not? I think leaders are aware. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't coached anyone who has who struggles with the awareness. Right. But what I think it is is that leaders, especially at the executive level, and maybe even at other levels have so many competing demands, you know? So it's not just the people and what they want. Because them, they are well. I have well. shareholders, they want something. I have customers, they want something. I have regulators, they want something. There's the general public who always wants something. <laughs> and we can keep going on and on. And it falls to the leader or the leaders to make decisions that somehow satisfies all these needs. And it's one pie. Mm. So it's not like you could make bigger pieces it's if you have if you cut it in eight it's just eight pieces eight even pieces and you can't make one piece bigger <laughs> so it means that the leader very often has to make very tough decisions okay. um, about people now having said that the style behavioral style of the leader sometimes gets in their way right so i've heard leaders and i've coached leaders who have said, said look richard this is all well and good you know, but i have a company to run which means I have money to make. That's mm -hmm. code for I have mm -hmm. money to mm -hmm. make. And so the 
conversation usually goes to, okay, so how do you make that money? How do you, how do you literally make that money? These people <coughs> that you are saying might be a challenge in this situation are the ones making the money. You don't make it. Right. At the end of the day. You don't make it at the end of the day. I mean, you guide, you set the tone, you create right. the structures, Policies you do all those yeah. kinds of things. You hold people accountable, but they are the ones in the belly of the beast actually working. So in the COVID-19 scenario, there's one client I've been working with up the Caribbean, and their challenge is finding the balance, mm -hmm. the equilibrium between the demands of the business in this time. Right. This time is tough. Yes. Keeping it yes. alive yes. and then the demands of people. Yes. You know, they had to lay off some people. Right, the responsibility. They of had no choice. And, but then yeah. you have some lead, um, followers who are saying, well, yeah, but the cost of living and I still have these challenges and my husband is no longer employed. My wife wow. is no longer employed. How do I manage all of this? You're asking more of me. I can't yeah. do all of this. You have to pay. Children home, and home schooling. Exactly. Thank you for putting that in. Mm. And so sometimes a leader, all a leader can do is understand. They can't always make decisions that will benefit the individual, Everybody. every okay. individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if they do that, they'll sacrifice the organization. That's right. Then it won't benefit anyone. Anybody. <laughs> Which is tough, huh? Eh? Yeah. So that's a yeah. hard place, and that keeps some leaders up at night, you know. Yes, so, sir. And then you have to keep in mind, too, many of the leaders, their style, their behavioral mm -hmm. style is such that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they work. That's how they got there. The grind. They I mean, yeah. I'm there and I'm doing my thing and I'm working and I'm working and I'm working. <laughs> yes, and that's good. Yes, that's but good. then sometimes they forget that, you know, there yeah. are people who don't see the world that way and they right. can't, their situation doesn't allow them to behave yes. like that. They have to be reminded. So Awesome stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much, Uncle Richard. Richard, Mr. Richard Solomon <laughs> on the inside. Yeah. This is a two-part series. We're talking leadership right here on the Savvy Singers TV and we are so privileged to have uh, Uncle Richard on the inside with us. And he will be back for part two. Let's talk leadership right here. Savvy Singers TV. See you.